I really haven't met a person yet who somewhere at some point in time deep down inside doesn't want to do more doesn't want to be more doesn't want to achieve more in their personal life about themselves than what they currently are today they want to be a better baseball player they want to be a better football player they want to be a better athlete or they want to be a better housewife or they want to find a perfect marriage in some way be that special spouse you know that is the one and the only one and each one of us have ideas about who we are and what we want to be you know what's interesting is that oftentimes <coughs> most people when they have a poor self-image and are given a compliment they're shocked about how they feel in response to that or sometimes when people have this great self-image and they're told the truth of the reality of their pride they're not willing to receive some of the failings of their personality so you see everyone has a certain perspective about themselves they have a certain way of looking at themselves a certain viewpoint where they either know where they're coming from and where they want to go or they think they've arrived and they don't see the personality that they really are now sometimes at some point in time we actually do know where we are and who we are we come to that conclusion because we have confronted some failing in our life and we see the reality of our own fallibility that we're not perfect and that we're a far cry from being the perfect Christian much less the perfect sinner or perfect saint anyone at any point in time can tell you there are no perfect baseball players there are no perfect golfers there are no perfect people in life which is why all of us at some point in time seek to achieve more than who we are and what we are now you can do that in lots of variety of ways and I know there are people out there that <clears throat> they envision themselves in some way they they see the ball going into the hole they envision the ball they promote the ball and the ball misses the hole well you know what happened to their vision well you know <laughs> it was a nice idea but it didn't work some things work temporarily it seems like but the only thing I've ever found that actually works completely is Jesus Christ you see Jesus as a person promised that he would send someone to help us he would send some person to come to us and explain to us the things that we need in life as well as in living through this existence that we call living Jesus said he would send that comforter he would be a person like unto himself that would come and give us the ability to improve ourselves to change ourselves you see we can't do it in and of ourselves because we have no strength really and we can't even see our own faults most of the time or our failings so God as the Son of God said he would send another comforter he would send the spirit of truth that when he came sent by the Father that he would lead us into all truth that he would really show us what we really are but then also encourage us in the direction that we are going so we will and we shall improve if we seek to go on with God rather than to just simply sit on our hands and our feet and say oh well I've made it or I'll never get there the reality is is God wants to take you all the way to himself and someday you'll begin to see the progress you've made as you've walked in a humble way with the Lord thy God the concentration of personal sin woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips when I get into the presence of God I do not realize that I am a sinner in an indefinite sense I realize the concentration of sin in a particular feature in my life a man will easily say oh yeah of course I'm a sinner but when he gets into the presence of God he cannot get off with that statement only because God confronts him directly in the sin he's committed 
this is always the sign that a man or woman is in the presence of God. There is never any vague sense of sin or generalities, but specificity. God is specific and points out directly where you fail. God begins by convicting us of the one thing fixed on in the mind that is prompted by His Spirit if we yield to His conviction on that point. He will lead us down to the great disposition of sin underneath. When we feel convicted in some area, God will direct us to the root cause of that area. And God will change us by rearranging us and causing us to focus in on that point that He sees so obvious that we do not. We like to hide from the fact of our sin by calling ourselves sinners. That is the way God always deals with us when He is conscious, when we are consciously in His presence. We are aware of our sin. This experience of the concentration of sin is true in the greatest and least of saints as well as in the greatest and least of sinners. When a man is on the first rung of the ladder of experience, he may say, Oh, I don't know what I have done wrong, but the Spirit of God will point out some particular definite thing. God always reveals sin. The Spirit of God came to reveal sin in man, that he might know what it is that God sees so obvious before him. For God is light, and in him there is no darkness. But in man there is darkness, and he needs to come to the light so that his deeds would be revealed for what they are. The effect of the vision of the holiness of the Lord on Isaiah was to bring him to, was bring him to the realization that he was a man of unclean lips. And he laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched my lips, and your iniquity is taken from you, and your sin purged. The cleansing fire had to be applied where the sin had been concentrated. God will focus in on and direct you towards that which you personally, alone with Him, need to deal with God one-on-one. -on -one. God tells you what your sin is, not man. It may be obvious to those around you, but only God can reveal to you the truth, the reality, and the fact of what the sin is and the root cause of that sin is. And God doesn't do that in order to humble you or to make you into feeling withdrawn from Him, but He wants to show you what you can offer to Him and let Him fix for you that you cannot take care of yourself because each one of us has a sinful nature. And until the day that we die and go home to be with the Lord, we shall not be perfect. So we all strive to do more. We all want to be more. We all can achieve more if we turn it over to the Lord our God with a humble heart, asking Jesus to take it from us, to change us and to rearrange us by His Spirit that He might make us no longer susceptible to that failing or failure in our life, but rather overcome it by the love of God, that God loves us even as we are today. So if you would achieve more than what you want to be, if you would conquer that which you feel like is sin in your life, then you have to accept that God loves you, first of all, and that God is moving you from glory to glory into the image of His incorruptible Son. You are being changed, but you have to exchange with God the reality of knowing what it is, where it is, and what He's doing about it. Because you and God have something that you need to do together, and that is called repentance. So give God your sin, and you'll find that He'll give you His righteousness.